Yo, what's up everybody? I am Pythonicus, and I'm about to bring you a most incredibly broken run of one of probably your favorite games of all time. Uh, with me for commentary, I've got a couple of people. I got Kakusu Sora. Hello. We're yeah. sorry in advance. <laughs> and I got Metal Glen Solid. Hello. And today we're going to be running any percent easy Metal Gear Solid, but on the PC. So that's that's going to be fun. So uh, I think that's I think that's all the the preamble we need. So let's get this thing going in three, two, one, go. This is so first off, directly off the bat, you might notice I just completely skipped over whatever Colonel Campbell had to say, and that's a feature. That is a feature of the PC port. And. Uh, I guess I guess to go over that we can have we can have Glenn kind of talk about it a little bit. All right, so this game is basically a port of uh, the Integral version, which was released about a year or so after the original was released on the PlayStation One, and it lets us do a couple of extra things, uh, namely the big one being a uh, cutscene skip toward the end of the game with Liquid. It lets you save a couple of minutes there. The PC port takes things a little bit further. You can skip Codex. You can do all sorts of crazy things that uh, we'll get to as we come to them, but the codecs are going to save you a lot of mashing hassle. If anyone remembers going for higher ranks on maybe higher difficulties, you would remember mashing through the codecs and going, ow, my hand. <laughs> but yeah, I think myself cool. and Python realized that MGS1 or Metal Gear Solid 1 on the PlayStation is the only game that deals with a lot of mashing. Yeah, it's which which makes the PC port especially nice. So uh, today we're running the any percent category. Uh, this game is split into all bosses and the any percent. And any percent is uh, well, it's it's pretty busted. Um, so Sora is primarily a console runner. Glenn is primarily a PC runner. And uh, I guess. As part of the commentary, we can kind of go over the differences between the two. Um, but as we stand, we're just about out of the docks here. We just got to wait for this guard to cycle a little bit further, and then we're good. And the turn now. Is it now? There we go. <laughs> I hate him. And it's like that. That corner is just really ominous. <laughs> so. Well, to get out of here, we're going to take advantage of a little visual cue, knock on the wall, step to the side, and hey, we're out of here. So, the PC port is, it's as, as I said, it's, it's pretty magical. Um, so, this port was made by a couple of dudes, really, let's be honest. There, there's, there's a handful of people who worked on the port, and uh, it's a fairly accurate port for the most part, except uh, you may have noticed I just did something a little odd that you might not think of in an MGS game, and that is I used the hotkey and equipped those chaff without a menu. And, uh, yeah, normally when you're playing console, you actually have to use like um, R2 or L2 to actually swap your items. Here you don't really do that, you actually have your hotkeys, which is really nice. Oh yeah, very, very handy. Uh, in fact, the game might be a little busted because of that, but we'll see about that. So, the beginning of this game is going to be pr pretty much exactly the same whether you're running console or PC. Uh, the uh, the opening like four, five, six minutes are pretty identical, honestly. But uh, once once we get out of the torture cell, things are going to get a whole lot more interesting. But till then, going to make our way through the tank hangar, knock on the box a couple times, get that guy's attention, and uh, away we go. So, Sora. Hi. Uh, talk about event, would you? Okay, so uh, the first glitch that we're going to perform is called the vent glitch. Uh, so, as you guys know about Snake, he has a dummy thick butt. 
So you got to do is basically crawl on the ground and then look up and then use your butt to basically go through the wall. And then, uh, yeah, you you get to skip a bunch of bosses. Uh, four or five of them. Shut up. Yeah, you get to skip uh, Sniper Wolf, um, Ocelot, um, uh, Psycho Mantis, Raven, and oh yeah, the Ninja, Cyborg Ninja, so five. Oh, hot dang, hold on. I see a name in chat that I haven't seen in a while. Forensic, my dude, how are you doing? Oh my, he is there. <laughs> Decoy Octopus counts as a boss. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. So yeah, uh, we clipped out of bounds and uh, we kind of went behind a door we're not supposed to have access to just yet. And hey, we we're, we're, we're get, we got caught. And uh, I'm assuming that the uh, the bid war hasn't changed from saving Meryl, so I, I guess that's what I'm just going to go ahead and do. But before we can do that, we have to spook Johnny so he doesn't fall asleep, which I promise you is actually a thing that actually happens. Yeah, he's not really great at his job. But look at his vision. He's got such good vision. He really does. I mean, he's like the best vision, uh, I don't know, soldier out there, but doesn't do that much work. Shut up, okay. will ya? Shut up! So we have to we have to wait for him to cycle around the room once uh, every time we are in this cell. Shut up! And we're gonna be in this cell three times because uh, we gotta Shut do up, two torture there, sessions, and on the third one we uh, we get sprung out. Snake, it's showtime. Some Ocelot stranger comes to our aid, I think, right? Something like that. I don't know, man. Some, in, weird. some invisible man he gives you like a bunch <laughs> of condiments and a and a handkerchief. He thinks you're a French fry. No, that's fair. All right, so uh, you might notice my life bar is kind of tiny. Uh, that's because, as we mentioned, any percent kind of skips Probably a few bosses, like and the bosses are how you increase your health. Shall we go again? Which, uh, well. If you're not careful with the mash, you can actually die and just straight up lose a run here. Which is fine in most cases because in PB attempts, you're actually going to be just not bothering with this at all. Had enough yet? Mm -hmm. We're not finished yet. Who wants to add two minutes to their run for no reason? <laughs> and the, this actually has zero bearing on the route itself, so this is why it isn't its own category. I mean, you, you got you got to say Meryl, even though I mean, in in this run, Snake actually never met Meryl. Who's, who's Meryl? We technically, who? don't know who she is. She just shows up at the end of the game and helps us get out of here. That witch. She took my clothes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm knocking on the wall here. Um, basically, I'm just preventing him from sneezing. Uh, in the Twin Snakes, it actually saves time. I'm not so sure on the on the uh, original here, but it's just something it's, to pass the time. It's about a second to a second and a half. Imagine oh, in real life if a knock can actually like help you stop sneezing. Strange times we live in. Got to prevent the spread of anything we can. Yes. But I promise, once we actually do get out of this cell, the, the run is going to open up quite a lot. It's going to look a whole lot different from your casual playthrough, I promise. I mean, it already does, but we're not going to talk about that. What are you talking about? I've always glitched through that wall. <laughs> Wait, which wall? Huh? What's a wall? <laughs> you PC oh, right, players. that's a suggestion. I play the real game on the console! <laughs> oh man. There are so many other things I'd rather talk about than console versus PC. <laughs> you have the recession genes! <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna have to go through this okay. one more time. Another I'll cycle of three torture one. rounds, and then we're gonna be uh, ski daddling on out of here. He means that quite literally. Oh, yes. 
Oh, there is actually one small difference that we're going to have to pay attention to uh, in saving Meryl instead of just like giving up that. immediately. Shall we go again? <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty important because it's something that quite literally can kill you. <laughs> you know what's sad? This is the second time in 24 hours that I've seen this particular ending being done and I forgot about it again. <laughs> oh, we're, we're not going to talk about PAL MGS1 either. Uh, I might technically have the world record for PAL for this game. Even though it's not actually separated out in PAL and NTSC versions. <laughs> so much reason to. Alright, so now that that's done, uh, Johnny's gonna have another bowel movement and we can, uh... <laughs> we can, we can, we can finally take our ketchup and get out of here. Use your ketchup and handkerchief. Like, hey, go stain yourself with ketchup and then wipe yourself with it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if anyone in chat can actually describe to us what it's like to lay down in a pool of ketchup, that'd be great. <laughs> Provide I, I just had experience. chicken today with ketchup. Oh, man. Honestly, ketchup, for me, bottom tier condiment. It was the only thing available in the fridge just... for me, alright? <laughs> Well, hang on. Is that on everything or just? Hey, I'm here. Where? Yeah, pretty much everything. Okay. Oh, jeez. He's coming All right. back. <laughs> See you later. So it's time to oh, bust geez. on out of here. Uh, bye, dude. <laughs> Who are you? I've never met you before. I mean, he's he's given us the ability to crush our legs with a door and. Totally uh, look like we bled out. My legs. My, so leg! <laughs> My leg. My oh, leg. but how much deeper can we go? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've saved Meryl, but her her husband dies. Spoiler. Johnny this, is dead. This is our own timeline. This is this the best is timeline. timeline. The, the best timeline, yes. So we're gonna hotkey no. our, gonna hotkey our uh, chaff back on, and then we're gonna just get the hell out. It's a small detail we haven't mentioned yet. You might be wondering why do we have the chaff equipped the entire time? Oh when yeah. In fact, you actually run faster. Yeah. You better uh, not. It's not a statement piece, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Well, that's fine. So here is our first. I like down. Here's our first real break. Uh, you might notice that I wasn't taking damage. This is uh, well, it's not intentional, but for the run, it is. Um, this is what's different between the the console and PC version bread and butter of the PC port. Oh, yes. So, uh, due to hotkeys, we are able to do some things. And Glenn, since since this is your field, you can go ahead. So, the gist of it is, when you're going into the PSG1, the game is supposed to make Snake and his hitbox disappear. With hotkeys, we can interrupt that process a little bit, you essentially will have zero hitbox and can do as you please for the most part while basically making everyone and everything in this game a stormtrooper. They can't hit you. <laughs> Nothing they can do about it until you lie down or complete the animation in some way. Yes. Ah, yes. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> the nuke building. So, um... In the nuke building, we are technically unable to use any weapons aside from the chaff. The chaff is literally the one item you're allowed. So, that's that's one good thing going for the chaff. But also, if we catch an alert here, doors close, we get lots of damage, gas floods the chamber. It's a bad, it's a bad time, so we're going to not have that happen. Yeah, you really don't want that to happen. And uh, 
You might have noticed it by now, but I've been doing something called throw canceling. It's a it's a pretty basic form of animation cancel. Basically by unequipping and re-equipping a weapon after I've thrown someone. Uh, it skips the rest of the animation of throwing them, so I can just get moving immediately. Pretty handy. Also, animation canceling is so nice. Got the most threatening bookshelf in all of eternity has has fallen. Oh no. Uh, that it's a boss. You, you don't know it, but that's that's Psycho Mantis. Um, he's really lazy on being a boss today, Damn so he just decided to like be a bookshelf. <laughs> so another another handy thing about uh, GME, which is the the glitch we're using to uh, kind of remove our hitbox, is that we can break load zones uh, should we crouch before actually uh, initiating the glitch. And uh, yeah, we get to go out of bounds, and also. Another neat thing is that uh, PC port allows you to move around in first-person view mode. Eat that, MGS2 VR. <laughs> this so. is also one of those weird games where there's a fixed set of values for map coordinates, and if you just happen to meet, reach the minimum or reach the maximum, it just sends you to the other side. So it could do that, stuff like that. I didn't actually mean to sit in first-person there, although... That would be an experiment. How how well can you climb the stairs in first person only <laughs> mode? Uh, we may. Have I mean, to you ask... crawl on the ground like the snake you are. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, first person running? Yeah. Yeah, you might want to ask. Uh, underwater smoking. I think that's what he does, or he used to do it. Oh really? Huh. I think I've seen him do it. So hey, uh, you might remember the tower climb being one of the more stressful por uh, portions of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, none of these guys can hit us. We're going too fast. <laughs> They're just stormtroopers, man. It's fine. So. Uh, yeah, for the console version, you actually have to count how many flights of stairs you're going to toss and uh, to toss soldiers and also to toss some some uh, stun grenades. But here, because of God mode, you don't really have to worry about that so much. Yeah, it's pretty pretty relaxing. Uh, the one the one actual thing about this game is that a, a true analog doesn't exist. There's only eight way movement, so actually making it up these stairs optimally is a pain. As you saw, I got kind of caught up on the banister at one point. The corners are the true boss. Yeah. <laughs> It happened. Have they changed the story? No, the story is exactly the same. It's just uh, a little more broken than you might be used to. So hey, we're gonna we're gonna break this load zone. Uh, <laughs> probably for no reason. I just felt like it, honestly. Then we're gonna crouch up here. <laughs> Whenever you break something, you're only doing it because it's faster, right? Pretty much, yeah. Right? So, the rappel. Uh, we can't go into god mode for this, but it's fine. We shouldn't die here anyway. Shouldn't. If it happens, I'll be kind of sad. So, we want to be maximizing the amount of time we're uh, spending on these diagonal girders. Missed that one. Oh my. Oh my. Stop! I'm sorry. Whatever I've done, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, the goal here is to just make it as far, like, all the way to the bottom. And holy crap, I'm actually dying. I'm not. No, you got this. You, you got. You got. You... I'm not actually going to die, but God, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> Flex tape. Uh, uh. I'm sorry. Uh. Anyway, so he can GME here which breaks these guys too. And uh, I went into first person view mode to kind of fix interactability. Otherwise you can't like open your menus or punch ladders to get on them or anything. And then here, in case you missed it, I'm breaking a load zone. If you want to see the hind, because I'm sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> Even when you're speed running on the, the PC version, you don't really see the hind D. You hear it. It shoots you a couple times. 
Whoa! Okay, I've got to be very careful here. So I'm going to take this, like, nice and nice and safely. Kind of do this little half-step thing. He's doing a dance. And that sniper wolf dead. <laughs> sniper wolf know, has played by her laser. In both ports, you basically just, like, do a weird dance to the sniper wolf, and she's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then the fight's over. So, uh... Yeah. Out of Bounds isn't really, uh... Isn't really anything but a state of... It is a state of being in this, in this port. Uh... But yeah, by breaking by breaking the loading zones with GME two or GME version two or whatever you want to call it, what actually ends up happening is uh, you can just clip through whatever you want, basically. We can just kick these guys off our elevator. Your life bar is like giving me an anxiety right now. It's fine. It's totally fine. And, and, and yeah, to offer an explanation about what just happened with Sniper Wolf, um, basically, I exploited GME in a way that got me past uh, the, uh, the, the gunshot barrier, basically. And the game doesn't really know what to do with it at that point, so it just lets you pass. Yeah, the trigger for the cutscene is there during the fight. But intentionally, they didn't want you to get there so they set up a separate barrier for wolf to automatically shoot you and we just kind of said no yeah basically so uh no um uh... yeah <laughs> sorry i was no, just no, saying that good. snake is break dancing yeah i mean dances a lot in this game i mean in portable ops i like to say that metal gear is a uh platforming series, but Metal Gear Solid 1 makes a solid effort to make it a, a, a rhythm game. <laughs> Alright. So hey, we're about to actually fight a boss, guys. Ah, yes. Oh my god, a real boss, boss fight? Holy oh, moly, a boss fight? Incredible. So, uh, the goal here is just to chuck eight grenades at him, and, uh, yeah, his aim leaves something to be desired. I mean, that cannon from the M16, it's pretty heavy. I, I don't think I can aim with it either. Oh, yeah. So what Python did here is that he enabled god mode again, so, um, yeah, Vulcan can't really touch him. <laughs> Yeah. Uh... Basically, I mean, Vulcan's probably saying that there's something on his shoulder, and so he's trying to knock it off with the gun, but yeah, that's about it. Oh, that's <laughs> that's cool. My chaff just went down the hole. Oh. No. That's fine. So, there's two ways of going through the room. The fastest version is just to chuck a chaff at the beginning and then uh, kind of walk the optimal path. Or you can take the path that won't get you shot and ignore the chaff entirely. So. It's not a huge deal. Yeah. But, uh, rip, uh... Rip chaff grenade. Rip chaff. Also, chat, if you could help me out here, I want to see everyone zoom. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna... It's the zoom room. Yeah, we're gonna be hearing it a few times. You know, just a couple. Not too many, of course. Uh, Metal Gear. Yep, climbing all. And over then the Auto Autocon likes to call a lot. Yeah. How do you get her phone number? To... I don't know. It's a hacker. Maybe, I guess. May maybe, maybe he put his phone number on the handkerchief. Hmm. Mm. But, but I mean, he's calling us. He's a hacker. He is a hacker. It's true. All right, so he even he even stated it in this room. <laughs> Are you a hacker? <laughs> All right, so the pal key got shot out of our hands. We got to go grab that. Yes, chat. Pray, pray for God Rat. Oh yes, yes. This is the major RNG of this run. 
It's gonna Not be a glorious. So, uh, the rat. Glenn, he's your favorite, isn't he? <laughs> Don't you dare put words in my mouth. <laughs> Alright, so the rat can choose to be in one of two spots, or he can or he cannot choose to be anywhere. We're hoping for him to be the fastest place possible, which is right down here. Dang it! No. Oh. oh good, we got we got null rat. So I just, uh, I, <laughs> this has been happening to me uh, in practice the entire yeah. time. So I'm basically just sweeping the area and making sure to check both spawns periodically here. There he is. So, this... Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Step away from the vent! Step away from the vent, and you won't get hurt. I'm lying. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, oops, there's our pal key back. We're gonna go ahead and equip that and go back upstairs, because, uh, we gotta go input this thing. There's a lot of backtracking at this point. Is there anyone track in the MGSR community who's actually like, I don't know, a, a rat whisperer? I'm not saying that properly. Rat whisperer? Uh, what? I guess god rat also. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. But, uh, like I said, we gotta, we gotta input this card now. And, uh, there's... This, this card is special. You got three different shapes it can take. The first one is at room temp, and we've already got it at room temp, so we're just going to go ahead and put that in immediately. And uh, and then we're going to start doing the backtrack. Whoop. Which, uh, you know it, you love it. Hate to see it. Oh, nice! That's new. I've never had that oh. guy see me. What? <laughs> it's because you took the corner a little too tight. Ah, uh, makes sense. So, or uh, he's doing his job right. That guard once. is doing his job right. For once. He's the only one. <laughs> so yeah, the order we gotta go in is room temp, cold, hot. We've been somewhere cold. We've been somewhere room temp. I, I, have you guys seen a hot room anywhere? I think uh, I heard one a while back, but uh, I don't remember seeing it. Hmm. We'll have to figure that out. Hmm. So, the trick to the card is that uh, we have to spend literally exactly 61 seconds, or give or take a few frames, mm -hmm. uh, for it to change. So I'm going to be watching... I'm actually going to be watching the stream and watching that timer, which is... Uh, Oh, I saw a twenty. Twenty-seven. Uh, I saw I saw a twenty-seven oh nine when I started looking, but that's probably a few seconds late. So I'll go twenty-eight oh eight. Just just for safety. And uh, to kind of speed things up just a tiny bit, we can uh, we can wait here in the loading zone while Giamid. Uh, is uh, is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, while we've got the opportunity because there's nothing going on yes so we do have one donation that came in while we were or sorry two donations that came in while we were talking we have 15 dollars from c cormac I, I think i'm saying that right there's no message on that but thanks for the 15 bucks and then we have 10 dollars from underwater smoking that says hey. let's go pythonicus hey underwater smoking hello mgs1 runner all around good guy i think the card is just about ready Part is ready. We can just crouch in and uh, get out of here. This time, not dropping our uh, chaff grenade down a hole. And uh, now we can go input the cold card. Now, normally uh, in PB attempts, we wouldn't really think about checking the card, but since I was already confused about what the time I should be leaving at was, you know, better to be safe than sorry, because. Leaving before the card changes wastes you quite a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Depends how far back to that computer room you want to go. Plus yeah. one minute. But, uh... Yep. 
one, well, two more treks through this room. Then we gotta go find a place to heat up our card a little bit. And, uh, this is actually a good time to mention about how... We mentioned already how the game was ported by only, like, a couple of people here and there. Um... And not only that, but Konami didn't really support the release too well, or support the development. So these guys had to do some shenanigans to actually uh, get the music for the game. And as an unfortunate result, a few tracks got a little broken. And uh, if I can get on this ladder, we might actually hear that track here in a few moments. That sucks too. It's such a good track. Yeah. It also kind of messes up with you because, like, so there's some runners who just depend on sound cues um, if we're not actually looking at a timer. And uh, unfortunately for this port, it actually screws with your brain a bit. Yeah. Also, I like I like the new uh, the new head cannon that Snake's best friend is a chaff grenade. Keep it up, Chet. <laughs> well, while, while, uh, while we're backtracking back and forth, we are grabbing a lot of Stinger ammo. Because, of course, at some point, we're going to have to deal with Metal Gear. <laughs> so, we need, we need a bit of ammo for that. And, uh... Also, uh, shoutouts to Square Blood. Shoutouts to Square Blood. Indeed. Best thing about the port, the square blood. Uh, so we didn't mention it the first time, but uh, there was supposed to be a codec call on this elevator when we were going down, and uh, that kind of didn't happen. Uh, so we used the trigger breaking effect on the uh, on the second form of GME to go ahead and just not. Because even though we can we can just instantly skip codec calls, it's better if we don't even see them in the first place. Especially on the elevators, the elevators are a fixed time limit. So, and the codec pauses time. So why would you want to do that? Exactly. Is that his new Smash Bros. move? I mean, it might as well be. <laughs> Hey, we're gonna avoid damage here. Inconsequential, really, but nice. Good turret. Good nice. boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my viewers actually has Is that what we're doing? A... We're gonna start calling it a good boy and, you know, giving it a name and petting it when it does good things? <laughs> is, is that what's gonna go on with this turret now? <laughs> Maybe. Alright, so, the hot room, we did pass through it, we just didn't see any of it. It's the blast furnace, it's full of lava, it's this whole thing. But we're just gonna go ahead in here for about a minute. Uh, on, on the timer I'm looking at. So, like I said, uh, they had issues sourcing the music for this port. And this is the one track that is specifically got kind of screwed by that. Um, you might hear it loop, maybe. Oh, well, dang. So yeah, uh, effectively they had to pirate this this uh, music in order to actually make this port. And uh, either the version they got wasn't quite right, or they had to chop it up themselves. But, you know, it is what it is, really. All right, so One breath at a time. Just about there. We just... Yep, we're good. Oh, there we go. And one more time down the elevators. One more time. <laughs> and now I got Daft Punk in my head now. That's your fault. <laughs> got, got me feeling so free. It's time to celebrate. 
<laughs> oh, hold on. We gotta we gotta give Snake his his friend back. He's nothing without his chaff grenade. I mean, he's gonna have some friends in the second elevator. I mean, yeah. It's just true. Oh. I, I keep an eye oh. on this for his name. Ah! Ah! Last elevator. Here we go. Bad turret. Bad. Bad, Bad turret. <laughs> go to your room. Wait. Go to your corner. <laughs> Get back in your crate. You're coming down. No, nope, we're putting you away. <laughs> Need recalibrated. So yeah, despite the fact that we kind of blew Raven up, his birds are still here, and we can punch him. Punch bird. Punch bird. Off my elevator. <laughs> this is my elevator. No birds allowed. Oh wow, that was actually a significant amount of birds that landed on the elevator. Usually there's like three or four. Alright. So at least they don't Zelda. Hit bird, bird kills you. Oh no. Alright, so heading back one last time to Rex's lair. One more chaff grenade sacrificed to uh, the effect of saving time. And Just one don't throw more... it in the ditch. No, no, no ditches. One more pack of stinger ammo, and we're pretty much golden. We, uh. All we gotta do is input the last card, and uh, we're pretty much at the, uh, the final boss rush. Fist fight and a joke. What are you on about? A fist fight and a joke. But we're not playing MGS4 now. Ah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So we get to deal with our big friend over here one last time. He's, uh... He hasn't had much success in catching us yet. He's noticed us, but, like, he can't really do anything. It's almost like this is set to easy or something. Eh. <laughs> Alright, so... We get locked in, we gotta call out a con. And then we gotta just kind of wait here for a sec. Eh, let me out. Snake has uncontrollable gas. <laughs> oh, God. God, this room is so stinky. <laughs> I mean, I, I've heard of I've heard of the Dutch oven, but that's that's pretty bad. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> All right, so move forward a little bit, GME, and then we're gonna just gonna aim upward. In our defense, we did say we were sorry beforehand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh. I hope you like avoiding iframes, because that's basically all we're doing. And, uh, hmm. You know what? We haven't danced quite enough. It's time to wiggle, wiggle! But, but can you do it? It's no good. I can't do it. I'll hit Raiden. Oh, wait. <laughs> Wrong game. Hey, it was my favorite line for once. Usually he just tells me I see. There so, you are. Second verse, same as the first. Avoid iframes, shoot him alive. If it's how is, you're shooting liquid right in the face. Yeah, that's they really hurt, you know. Yeah. No, that's why they call him Liquid Snake. He, the bullets and stuff just pass right through him. If you win, so I'm gonna let Sora and to uh, Glenn that. deal with this. I'm gonna take my headset off and uh, and Couldn't hopefully I don't fail this horribly. Moment of love. Okay, well, uh, so for this boss fight, it's actually quite annoying for all of us. 
Uh, but there's a way of actually doing it. And uh, you need to get yourself doing an infinite punch. Um, Glenn, would you like to explain how to do that? So there's a couple iterations on how to set this up. You're going to see, I think, Python attempt a two throw. Um, some other runners have opted to use a one throw, or there's a set of movement you can do where it's going to put him in the same position as the other two and you call it the no throw. So here we go here, two throw, and you basically want to hit in a rhythm that's something like this. And you want to keep doing that until you can uh, kick him off the edge of Rex here. And like Sword said, this is a this is kind of the bane of everyone's existence if you get to run this far, uh, especially on PB or world record attempts. Liquid can just ruin your whole life. He's giving Python a bit of trouble here. And the issue with this is backups kind of depend on how he wants to handle himself. Mm -hmm. So he's doing the PPK right now, which is punch, punch, kick. Uh, now he's back to doing just combos. It's kind of a problem with having no analog and only eight-way directional on a control stick. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've... my rhythm is off, so I'm just gonna... You're almost there, though. Oh, that should have got been. this. This is also really annoying about Liquid is that even though that you're like, you know, he's down to his last strand, um, you need to kick him off in order to actually finish this boss fight. Or also like regenerate a portion of his health. There we go. On the Twin Snakes version, you can just deplete it. Hey, who who are these people? They just like helping us out of here. Who is who's this lady? Why is she wearing a life jacket? So the escape is pretty straightforward. Just gonna hop on one of these jeeps because. All right, jeez. <laughs> and um, Snake's gonna hop on the back here and fire the M60 into barrels, guards, you name it. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna have a little bit of a pop off. Ooh, she ran someone over. Did she? Oh, oh, I, I, I think I saw her on the live stream because oh, our TMP is in the okay, snake, let's go. Yeah. The end of the run. I'm just like so annoyed for the segment for like either Meryl or Otacon to not, you know, drive them over because. We'll Come on. <laughs> Much more fun when they help out. You did it, Snake! Check Good points. job, Snake! You did it! Yeah. Good boy! <laughs> Sorry. Not yet, Snake! See, the real problem <laughs> is here that Snake friends. doesn't have his best friend, Chaff. <laughs> Nor the Chaff's, you know, Siamese twin, the sniper rifle. <laughs> no GME here. Yeah, so even though that you kicked off Liquid off the of Metal Gear, um, he's still alive. He's the yeah, he's made out of. He's just. <laughs> he's the... I got the dominant genes! Except he doesn't think so. Because, <laughs> you know, plot. Mm hmm. Ooh, that was actually really good. So the escape actually works on a hidden health bar mechanic. Uh, so we're aiming to do as much damage as quickly as possible here. And uh, I actually got pretty much a perfect uh, phase transition shot. One more shot. Yep, okay. Now, normally we cut time at this white flash, but what we're gonna do instead since it's the PC port and we can just kind of skip through everything. Snake, can you hear me? Uh, if the game would allow me to do so. <laughs> and any moment now. And ah. GG. Forty three thirty nine. Nice. Not a bad run at all. Very very happy with that. Especially saving Meryl. <laughs> but yeah. Uh thank you everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks to the Hecathon boys for, for letting me do this for y'all. Uh and big thanks to Zora and Glenn for, for hanging out with me for this.
You are very welcome. If, uh, one last thing, if perchance you would like to learn any of the Metal Gear games as a speedrun, from Metal Gear 1 all the way down to Survive, uh, check us out at MetalGearSpeedRunners.com. We have links to Wiki, Discord, all that sort of stuff. Just give us a, give us a look. See if you like anything you see. But uh, with that, I think uh, I think we're just about wrapped up here.